In this video, we're going to learn about encoding integers in Apache Park 8. Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. So we're going to first import pi arrow. And then once we've done that, we're going to create a million numbers ranging from 0 to 10,000. And we'll put that into a pi arrow table. Let's have a look at the table. So we can see we've got a bunch of, bunch of values there. And then if we convert it into pandas format and just grab that column and then call the value counts function, we can see how many copies of each number we've got. And so you can see we've got quite a lot of duplicates. And so that indicates to us that this is probably a good candidate for dictionary encoding. So dictionary encoding means that we're going to create a dictionary, a zero index dictionary mapping, uh, for example, zero to 2973, one to 1079, and sort of all the way down covering all the values in that column. And then we'll have one page representing the dictionary and then a bunch of data pages, which will be using the dictionary indices in lieu of the actual values. Now, we're not going to be storing those exactly as they are, because the, the number 12, for example, represented as a 64-bit number would look like this in base 2. So you can see there are a lot of zeros. And so Parker uses something called bit packing to reduce the amount of space that things take. So we know that we have a maximum of 10,001 values based on the unique values that we saw in the integers 10k column. So how many bits does it take to represent a maximum value of 10,000, remembering that we can start at zero? So if we come back to the Python REPL, we can then call size on that value counts and then call bit length on number of values minus one. And we can see we can get that all those values into 14 bits instead of 64. And so it means that the number 12 can be represented like this in base two, rather than like this, uh, which was what it looked like when we used 64 bits. So it's a saving of 50 bits for every value. So that's pretty cool. Let's come back to the Python REPL and we'll save this table to parquet format. And then we're gonna call the pages subcommand uh, on the PQ tool to have a look what uh, it looks like. And so you can see we've got the dictionary page at the top and then we've got the data pages and notice the R encoding. So that's indicating it's run length, uh, bit packing encoding and it's 1.75 bytes per value, so i.e. 14 bits. So, so far, so good. Now, what you might have remember is that there were lots of duplicates. So one, and one other thing that we could do is we could choose to sort the, the integers instead. And so this time, if we look at the table, you can see it's all, all the numbers are next to each other. So we've got all the zeros and we've got the 10,000s. And as well as bit packing, Parquet uses run length encoding. And so the idea here is, can we represent sequences of the same value in less space? So rather than on the left-hand side going 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on, can we do like what we see on the right-hand side where we're like, hey, I've got one eight times, I've got two three times, and so on. And so this is obviously quite a naive way of doing it, but Parquet does something like this, but a very, very clever <laughs> rather than my somewhat naive approach. So let's now come back to the Python REPL and we'll write this new sorted table to Parquet format. And if we then go over to the other tab and have a look at the pages sub command on that, we can see that the size has been reduced even more. And so now it's only taking 0 0.04 bytes per value. So that's pretty cool. Right? So that, that's what the, the run length encoding does. So if you can sort the data, a really good, uh, really good choice. And if we look at the total size of the files, we've gone two megabytes when it wasn't sorted and 144K when it was sorted. So that's awesome. Now let's have a look at another data set. So this time we're gonna create a hundred uh, or a million numbers but ranging from zero to 100 million. And again, we'll create a parquet table. Let's have a look at it. And again, we'll do the values counts on the pandas implementation. And so you can see this time, there's, there are many fewer duplicates. And that indicates to us, this is probably a good candidate for plain encoding. And so what that means is we're just gonna, we're gonna just write the values as they are. So we're gonna skip the dictionary step. And so we can then write that table to parquet format. We'll tell it use dictionary is false. So we're just gonna say, I don't, I don't want that dictionary at all. And then if we call the pages command, you can see that we've just got the values. So we've got 131,000 values in each data page sort of going all the way down. Now you might notice that looking at those max values on the right-hand side of the screen, they don't seem to be using all of the uh, int 64 type that we're using. Like maybe they could fit in something smaller. So let's now come back to our Python REPL and test out our intuition. So if we call, look at the max value in the column and then we call the bit length, uh, you can see that it fits inside 27 bits. So that actually means we can, we can co cast it down to 32 bits instead of using 64. So let's do that. So we'll create a table which is casted at 32 bit int and then we'll write that out to a new file. And if we come over to the other tab and call the pages command again, you can see we've reduced the size quite a lot. So now it's just taking an average of four bytes per value. And if we look at the total size of the files, you can see we've reduced it by half. So now let's have a look at uh, another one. So this time it's timestamps. So we're going to create a million timestamps which capture the time now, sort of as it's going through that loop. And we'll put that into a table. 
And let's have a look at the table so you can see we've got loads of different times. They don't differ by very much as you might expect. And so what that means is because we've got consecutive values, it's a good candidate for delta encoding. And the idea here is rather than storing every single value, we'll store just the initial value followed by the differences from that initial value. And so this works really well if we've got sequential data like timestamps or cumulative counts of some sort. So for example, rather than storing every single timestamp individually, like we've got on the left hand side here, we could store maybe just the first one and then the differences. So one, then two, then three, then seven, then three. And again, Parquet does something a lot more clever than this, but this is the general idea. And if we now write that out, this time we've got to pass in the column encoding, tell it the name of the column, so TS and then delta underscore binary packed. And if we come over, let's now have a look at the metadata of that file. And so notice that this time the logical type is timestamp, but we've actually got a different primitive type in 64. So it's storing these values as in 64, and they're only taking up 0.18 bytes each. If we then call the pages command, we can also get the total size, which is 172K, which remember compared to if we stored all those timestamps individually, it would have been eight bytes times a million records, it would have been eight megabytes. So we've saved a massive amount of space. So in summary, check your data before you choose your encoding, and I'll see you in the next one.